The reason I'm interested is because there are very high levels of belief in these phenomena. It's completely amenable to scientific study. There's a substantial amount of scientific evidence and it's very commonly reported. Well, how common is it reported? We did a survey on three different kinds of groups and we gave them a list of 25 different kinds of experiences that people report without using any psychic terms. And we said, well, how many of these 25 experiences have you ever had? Well, people who are enthusiastic, not surprisingly, 99% said they had at least one of these experiences on an average 13 of the 25 experiences. General population, also pretty high, on average, almost eight. Scientists and engineers, also extremely high and even more reported than the general population. So this was somewhat of a surprise to us because we would normally think that scientists and engineers are highly academically trained and kind of right left brain kind of people that would not have these experiences. But the fact is that we do, we just don't talk about it very much. So here's an example of the kind of email I get almost every day from somebody somewhere around the world. So this one I got in October. This lady writes, my son was a graduate student living on campus at Stanford. That's the Stanford campus. I was awakened by three bangs on our front door at about 11 at night and immediately felt my son was in danger. I woke my husband and he just said it was a bad dream and went back to sleep. I lay there awake in terror with my heart racing. About 10 minutes later, a friend of my son's called to say he had been taken to the ER as he had fallen. My son has a physical disability. He had fractured his right leg, femur, and his jaw. So this is a, a case that we would, we would label crisis telepathy. It's the a sense typically happening while asleep, but it could happen during the day as well, where something happens to a loved one at a distance, you somehow know it, you, you report it, and it turns out that your impression occurred at the time that the loved one was in trouble. Well, how do we explain these kinds of experiences? I would say about half of them are coincidence. And this is simply a matter of statistics that if there are 8 billion people on earth and each person has maybe a thousand experiences a day, some of them are gonna have amazing coincidences happen. And they're gonna report it and we'll listen to it and be amazed, but it could happen by chance. Some of it is confabulation. This means that memory is, is not completely correct. Some of it is fraud. Some of it is selective memory, but there's always something left over. And that's, that's where I'm interested. It's the something else which doesn't fit. So keep calm. I am a professor. I will give a bold statement. The bold statement is that psychic phenomena are quite real. The scientific evidence is very clear. And this means that the prevailing understanding of the mind, brain, mind, and consciousness relationship is incomplete. Well, why don't you know this? Well, as Mark Twain said, it ain't what you don't know that gets you into trouble. It's what you know for sure that just ain't so. And so here's an example of that. So here's Sean Carroll, a well-known physicist at Caltech, who has written that you don't need to set up elaborate double-blind protocols to pass judgment on the abilities of reported psychics. Our knowledge of the laws of physics rules them out. Speculations to the contrary are not the providence of bold visionaries, they are the dreams of crackpots. So what would Paul Kurtz say about this? Now, Paul Kurtz was the uh, founder of the Committee for the Scientific Investigation of Claims of the Paranormal and also the magazine Skeptical Inquirer and, and was until his death, uh, a leading skeptic who basically agreed with most of what people like Sean Carroll would say. But he said, only a fool of a scientist would dismiss the evidence and reports in front of him and substitute his own beliefs in their place. 